So this is what happens when your bobcat cylinders are leaking. And you could tell by my bobcat, all those little black dots on my driveway are from tons of oil spilling from the cylinders. Yeah, it's pretty bad, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So this is my little Bobcat 310. It's an older model. It's very similar to the 330. And some of the uh, things that I'm going to tell you will probably apply to both models. And they might work on some of the other Bobcats with the piston that has only a single ring on it. There's others that have multiple rings and different grooves. The nice thing about both of these models is that the kits you buy for the cylinders are exactly the same. All of the gaskets, O-rings, wipers, everything are exactly the same. The only difference is the cylinder length. Now I'm not going to show you how to break down the cylinders or how to clean them or any of that. I would recommend that you go to a local shop and have them do it. The reason is because of the aluminum heads. Don't use a pipe wrench and don't use channel locks on these like some of the other YouTube people are saying to do. You will destroy your heads. Just don't do it. So the first thing you want to do is take the cylinders off. I take mine to a local shop that does cylinders and um, they do a real good job of getting them apart. Um, as you may not know or may know, uh, Bobcats and the older ones especially had aluminum heads on them like so and they put them into steel bodies which causes them to corrode really bad so what i do is uh, i have a local shop take them off and then uh, i brought the cylinders back i cleaned them up and then painted them that one's already completed and these right here well, that one's completed too, but the uh, longer ones have not been. So, I'll show you how to do it. So this is the order of all the O-rings and seals, and wipers, everything that needs to go on your cylinder. Um, from left to right, you got all these. Um, there's a wiper, seal, backing O-ring, another O-ring, and then there's a, a couple of other pieces that go in there. Um, this is your actual piston, and this slides off of the end of your shaft from here. And what you need to do is take the smaller O-ring right here, which will go into this shaft, and then this will slide over the shaft. Then you're gonna put on your O-ring, and then on top of the O-ring will be your Teflon ring. And that has to be, people keep saying they have to warm them up or, or take and put them in an oven or something. You don't have to do that. I'll show you what you can do to get it on there pretty simple and let me get to that so the first thing you're going to want to do is take your piston and take your o-ring and slide that o-ring on to the ring once you get your o-ring on then you're going to want to put your teflon ring a teflon ring what i do is i'll take and i'll pull it between my both hands and kind of stretch it a little bit it's going to give a little bit more room to slide onto the end of that piston and over the top of the o-ring and I'll show you what it looks like once I get it out. So here's how you're going to get it on. You're going to slip it over the top of the, the piston so you have a little bit of give. And then you're going to slide this down until it fits into the groove by using one thumb to hold it down another thumb to slide it around slowly careful don't roll it but just push it on all the way around until it fits like this o-ring is behind it and your little teflon gasket is over it now it's going to be a little bit large for right now because you stretched it out but that's okay just let it sit for a little bit and it'll eventually s squeeze in not real tight but it'll squeeze in enough to get it inside the cylinder on the end of the shaft you're going to put the small little teeny o-ring it's 
just going to go right inside here. Okay. Now getting to the actual head and putting on the wiper, your inner seal, your backing plate, and then your O-ring. The first thing you want to do is get your, your inner seal put on the inside groove, and I'll show a picture of that in a second, uh, inside of here. So the way it goes on there is, is with the lip facing in towards the cylinder. You see that little lip? You also see it might have like little rings on the back of it. That faces the cylinder. The way I get this thing in there is to take and bend it so that it makes a little U-shaped. And then you can take and press it inside. It takes a little bit of manipulation, but you can get it inside. And then coming from the back side, you can actually push it into the, the opening. Like. Once it rolls into the groove, it's going to look like that. You manipulate it, and there you go. It's in. Now with this outside ring, you want this lip, this little part, the wiper part of it, to be facing out. And the little notches that you see in there should be facing in. And the way you do that is just to take and push the ring in so it goes into the groove. And then once you get it somewhat into the groove, you're going to pinch it in the middle here. And pop it in. That simple. I'll give you a picture of it so you can see what it looks like inside and out. Now the last two parts that you have to put in are these little this little backing washer and the backing washer is going to go on first goes like this cylinder side on, on this side. Now let's get it assembled. Okay, so the next part is actually putting the parts all back together and putting it into your cylinder. What you need to do is take your, your head and you want to put a little bit of lube on the actual shaft itself. Make sure the shaft is nice and clean. Um, the shop that does mine does a really good job. I'm just going to put a small amount on here and then just move it around so it has something to slip on. Well, it doesn't look like much, but this super lube works really, really good. All right, I'm going to put the head on, and the head just slips over the end. And give it a little bit of a turn. It's going to fit past the seal itself, and then it slides on. A little rotation, and then now in my model, it has a stop that keeps the cylinder from going too far. Uh, that's a spacer that goes over the shaft next. And then finally, we're going to put on the piston. The piston goes on with the small part facing that way. And then the top lock nut. I gotta take it over to the vise and uh, tighten this down. Okay, so once everything's locked down nice and tight where it doesn't rotate, O ring is compressed, it's ready to put into the cylinder. But before we put it into the cylinder, so we don't have to go through this 
problem again with having it seize up is using some anti-seize. So all you gotta do is put this onto just put it onto the threads all the way around. Now before I put this shaft inside the cylinder, I'm going to spray a little bit of WD-40 in there and I'm just squeegee it around a little bit with my fingers and then put a little bit onto the piston itself right here. I'm going to put a little bit on the piston itself, just on the, the ring. Don't need a lot, just enough to give it some lubrication and then what we'll do is we'll slide it into the tuner. Now they do recommend that you use some sort of sleeve or something like a uh, piston installation sleeve. You can get these in there by just rotating it slowly. Not really rotating, but just kind of moving it around. And it will eventually make the O-ring or the, the Teflon seal uh, shorten up and then it will slide into the cylinder. And as you can see, it made its way past the the threads and it's into the cylinder and then let's see if we can just slide it in. Okay, once you get it to this point, pull the head up against and slowly rotate and it should draw itself in. Once you get to the point where it is starting to be a little resistive and you can get your wrench, you can finish it up with this. Okay, then once you get it nice and tight, it should be good to go. Test it out. Um, by, you could either pressure test it with a little bit of air to make sure that you don't hear any air coming out of the seals or anywhere else. Or I don't know if there's places it might have a hole or something but you can pressure test it and then it's good to go on to the bobcat and there she is all good to go all hooked up greased up I already ran it through its cycle got all the air out of the lines out of the cylinders and refilled the reservoir and uh, ready for more work